Mount and Blade Combat, something I'm sure a lot of you have sunk many an hour into, and some of you may have never engaged in any of it at all, but you're perhaps looking to in the upcoming Mount and Blade Banner Lord 2. So in this here video, we're going to take a look at the new damage system and how it works, as it's a little bit different than original Mount and Blade. If you're a seasoned Mountain Blade player, a lot of this will sound very familiar, but I still think you'll pick up a thing or two. And if you're a complete rookie, hopefully this will give you a good basic understanding of how damage works in Bannerlord, so you can be ready for March 2020 and early access. Do remember though, this is a pre-release video based on the Bannerlord beta, so don't be surprised if you see anything change before release. I'll probably redo this video though once it's released, so it can be a bit more accurate and a tidier video. Anyway. Let us begin. So Tailworlds wanted to create a simple physics based damage system that has very little in the way of hidden variables. So we as players can know exactly how and why we're doing X amount of damage to the enemy. So while it has changed somewhat, it'll still feel very familiar to those mountain blade veterans. Now, it all begins with the different damage types, cut, pierce and blunt. Which type of damage you deliver will depend of course on the weapon that you're using and how you use it. Cut damage is delivered when you swing a bladed weapon, pierce damage is from when you stab or thrust a bladed weapon, and blunt damage is well from blunt weapons, hammers and maces etc. And then of course the first factor in deciding how much of those types of damage you will deliver is how big and fast your weapon is. As common sense will tell you, if you use a small light sword, it's going to be very fast to swing, but it's not going to do a ton of damage. If you use a massive two-handed axe, you'll be doing a lot of damage, but it's going to take a lot longer to swing, so it's overall slower, just like in any other game or in real life. Now, that's all good, knowing your weapon and your damage type, but how is it going to change when you come into contact with different enemies? Well, this is where armor comes into play. If we swing our sword here at this unarmoured peasant, the bottom left hand corner info will tell us what just happened, so keep an eye on that as we go if you care to. Now from the swing of my small sword we delivered 47 cut damage to his shoulder and he absorbed 7 of it. Absorb damage is basically damage blocked by the armour, so in this case not a lot for the lightly armoured peasant here. If we now move to an opponent with medium armour and we do the same thing, land in the same location, you can see he's blocked 25 of that damage and only received 40, so that's less than the light armour. And against heavy armour, you can see where this is going, he absorbs more of the damage into his armour, only taking 25 off of his health. So this tells us, much like in the original Mountain Blade, that swinging your weapon to do cut damage is effective against lighter troops. Against heavy armour though, it's not so good. If we want to deal with our heavily armoured foes, we're going to need to do pierce damage, which can be done with the thrust attack of many weapons. So if we test the thrust attack in the same way we did the swings, we'll notice a couple of things. First of all, we're doing less damage. Only 39 against the peasant, where it was 47 before, 31 against medium armour, where it was 40 before, and only 24 against heavy armour, when it was 25 before. But Zuck! You just said that the pierce damage would do more than the cut damage, when it hasn't. You lie to me, you bearded bastard. Well there, simmer down now. The devil is in the detail here. Notice the absorbed damage. It's only 19 when it was 43 before. The armor can't absorb as much damage because of the pierce attack. The problem here is that this sword just isn't that great at getting through armor. It has more swing damage than thrust damage. So there is a chance that with this sword, a swing could do as well as a pierce attack. But either way, a pierce attack is generally the way to go against heavier armour. So generally, you'll want to be swinging your weapon at the light and medium troops, as these are generally stronger attacks, and stabbing and thrusting at heavy troops, because the piercing damage will negate some of the armour. And then we have our final damage type, blunt damage, from blunt weapons. These kind of weapons won't hurt lighter troops as much, but they will put up a bit more damage on those heavier troops, so it kind of evens out that you're doing average amounts of damage on both kinds of enemy. Currently in the beta though, it seems like maces do just as well as short swords, maybe with less maximum potential damage. And of course this is going to affect different weapons in different ways. Axes, pole arms, lances, bows and crossbows, it's all going to be different. So the first thing to know when understanding damage in Bannerlord is that you've got cut, pierce and blunt damage and they respond differently to different kinds of armour. 
There's going to be a lot of variables involved with the weapons that you choose, especially if you're playing in campaign where we're going to have weapon quality playing a role, as there is weapon crafting, so if you make a poor quality sword, it's not going to be as good and do as much damage as a high quality made sword, right? Also, the weapon's weight distribution is going to play a factor. Is the sword heavy at the hilt? Does it have a heavy blade? Is it balanced? All this is going to factor in when it comes to making and designing your own weapons in the campaign. However, that is partially speculative because I'm going off what the dev blogs have said. I haven't obviously played it, so we'll see when it comes out. For now, in the multiplayer beta, there are certainly better swords given to better units. They do more damage, they have more thrust damage than swing damage, some of them. So there's a mix of different kinds of swords and axes and spears and maces, all the different kinds of weapons that we're going to have to learn how to use against different kinds of armors and enemies. The next modifier coming into play is relative speed. That is, your movement speed in relation to your target's movement speed, or how fast you're moving towards and away from each other. Basic physics, of course. So, if we stand still in front of somebody and hit them in the shoulder with an axe, you can see I do 98 damage. Now, if we do exactly the same thing, same weapon, same location, but we move towards the target, we're going to multiply the damage because of the extra weight and energy of the hit from the movement. So basically, if you move towards the direction of your swing, you will do more damage. As you can see, I've done 113 damage, and we now have a relative movement speed stat, 3.46 ms, which I assume is meters per second. Now, if we're moving away from the direction of our strike, it's actually going to cause less damage because we're taking some of the energy out of the impact. So what does this all mean? Well, quite simply, you just want to move in the direction of your strike. If you're stabbing, move forward along with the strike. If you're swinging to the right, move to the right. If you're swinging to the left, move to the left. You'll potentially generate more damage. It also, of course, depends whether your enemy is moving towards you or away from you as well. And of course, as the entire damage model is based around physics, it applies to all kinds of damage. If you're running backwards and you get hit by an arrow, you'll take less damage than if you're running towards it. See, I just took 65. Running towards it makes me take 78. Shot in the same place. And this is especially relevant to cavalry. If I charge towards this horse and stab it in the face with a spear, sorry horse, I do 216 damage. If I'm now moving away from the horse, running backwards, and I do the same thing, it's only 142 damage, a considerable amount less. And if I stand still and do the same thing, it's going to be somewhere in between, as I don't have the extra impact and energy from moving forwards, nor do I have less from moving away. So relative speed is the next part of our damage equation. So what kind of damage you tried to do against which kind of armor multiplied by the movement speed? I don't know. I'm not going to pretend to know how to put actual equations together. Maybe one of you can do it for me. But all I know is that the relative movement speed is a factor when doing damage. The faster you're moving towards your target, the more damage you'll potentially do. But of course, beware. This works both ways. If you're charging towards a horseman to try and stab him off his horse, you're liable to take more damage from him if he hits you because you're both moving towards each other. So the movement speeds work both ways. You could potentially do more damage, but you will potentially take more damage. It's a high risk, high reward system. But this also works the other way as well. If you want to try to take less damage from a hit, simply move away from it. This can certainly increase your chances of survival when being charged at by a horse or shot at with arrows. So always good to keep your movement in mind. And next in our damage multiplier equation is a fairly simple one, body location. Where does the hit land on the enemy body? Hopefully you will know that if you get stabbed in the arm, you're much less likely to die than if you get stabbed in the face. Here's a few examples regardless of it being very obvious. If we axe a man in the leg, we get 43 damage. If we axe him in the upper body, in this case the shoulder, we did 53 damage. And if we axe him in the head, it's a lovely 64 damage. So your best bet of doing the most damage is to aim for the enemy dome, of course, which is a lot harder as it's a smaller target and easier for them to get out the way, which is why aiming for the body is generally the safer bet. So consider body location when landing your blows. If you can hit someone in the head with certain weapons, it can be a one hit kill on certain armors. So there's certainly merit in aiming for those more vital areas of an enemy's body. So four parts down, what is the final part of our damage equation? It's a very important one that I think could be easily overlooked by people who just simply don't know that it's a thing. The subject I'm referring to is the impact point of your weapon. That is, which part of your weapon actually landed and hit the enemy. Allow me to demonstrate. 
Here I've got this big old Vulger with his giant Vulge, and I'm gonna smash this peasant. Oh wait, I did 31 damage. 31 measly damage. Why? Because I basically hit him with the pole of my weapon. It's still a pretty heavy pole, so it did some damage, and I had a bit of forward motion as well, but look what happens if I hit him with the correct part of my weapon. He gets thoroughly murdered, as he should, because I hit him with the blade of my weapon, as intended. So there is such a thing as being too close to your target when swinging your weapon. Now, it's not the case with all weapons. Swords seem to be mostly okay, because of course they're a long blade. But pole arms, axes, maces, they can have problems. You see here with this Bardish, I just did 20 damage. However, at the correct range, 106 damage. Sometimes you may get lucky though, like here, still 82 damage, probably because we hit him in the head, so that's quite a lot still. But if you compare it to being at the right distance, ooh, 196 damage is quite the difference. So trying to get the correct distance, depending on the range of your weapon, is going to be very important when engaging your enemies in Bannerlord. So you're going to need to learn to gauge distance to correctly connect with your weapon. So don't be surprised if you see odd numbers happening with certain weapons. If you hit someone with an axe and it says you did three blunt damage, you're going to be wondering how the hell that even happened. It's because you hit them with the blunt shaft of the weapon rather than the actual blade. Or if you're trying to stab people up close and personal with a long ass spear, you've just got no hope really. It can't be effectively used at that close range. So you'll need to learn how to control the distance to make the most out of your weapon. So there you have it. The damage formula in Bannerlord, at least for the most part. How well the damage type you inflict does depends on the enemy's armor. And then you have your relative speed to your target, which may increase or reduce the impact and energy inflicted upon landing a hit. And then where you hit them on their body and which part of the weapon you hit them with will be the final factors in determining your final damage delivered. Hopefully that all makes some sense. I know there's a lot of information to take in. However, with all that being said, you're probably not actually going to be thinking about these things that much. Because in the heat of battle, well, it's hard to remember and to execute all these things. It's hard to remember to move into your swing to do more damage. It's hard to maintain the perfect distance for your weapon at all times. It's hard to remember to aim for the enemy head when there's so much going on. So it's going to be fine if you can't perfectly remember to do everything, but it's certainly going to make you more effective if you can. So there you go, how damage works in Bannerlord. Now, I did intend this video to also include a combat guide, but when it occurred to me how much information there was to take in in this video, I figured it's best to split them up. So I will be doing a combat guide separately, so keep your eyes peeled for that. So I hope this has been useful to you. I hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the future.